Chapter 1 The Ugly Truth In 2013, I read this book that I heard so much about. There was finally a book for women that would address what it's like for us in the workplace. It was a huge topic of conversation at the water cooler and at dinner with friends. I couldn't go anywhere without hearing about Lean In. Companies across the country even started Lean In circles, groups of women who would come together to discuss goals, challenges, and anything of the sort. It's safe to say that it was something like a revolution, and I wanted a piece of the action. I had never seen anything like it. Lean In sparked a national conversation. Who the heck is this Sheryl Sandberg lady, I thought. I wanted to shake her hand. I hadn't even read her book yet. As an avid reader of everything from Real Housewives memoirs to James Baldwin, I went to get my copy and started plowing through it. But after reading it, I felt confused. I didn't feel the way that many of my white counterparts did. They felt inspired and empowered. You know how white people do, that hell yeah type of energy. Something was missing for me. This new manifesto was encouraging women to speak up. But black women and working class women were already doing this oftentimes in the face of opposition and where there was no room to advance. I remember wanting to shake the book in hopes that some advice would fall out that would address the differences faced by women of color in the workplace and how leaning in isn't a wash, rinse, repeat equation for us. If I leaned in any more, my face would be on the damn table. Listen, many of the book's basics like networking and advocating for yourself, all great advice. But networking and advocating for yourself look very different at work for women of color especially if you're the only person of color in the office. And not to mention, if you didn't graduate from an Ivy League school like Sandberg, your network might look different. What does this white lady know about struggling at work? She wrote a book from a place of privilege, and she already had a seat at the table, so leaning in was easier. Her feelings were valid, to be clear, and I don't want to take that away from her. But while she was pissed about not having a prime parking spot during her pregnancy, Black and brown women were dealing with systemic racism that prevents us from even using our voice to speak on subject matters like support for working mothers or the wage gap, because we aren't often at the table yet. Imagine me busting down Sergey Brin's door at Google and demanding new workplace policies. He would probably call security. Who is this crazy black woman leaning in? And equally as disappointing was the fact that most white women didn't even have enough emotional intelligence to realize that this book didn't touch on race and the inequalities that women who look like me face, yet they wanted everyone to read it in the women's book club. Lorraine Hansberry said it best, The whole realm of morality and ethics is something that has escaped the attention of women, by and large, and it needs the attention of intellectual women most desperately. The fact that Sandberg's entire book was written from a place of privilege absolutely floored me. Call me cynical, but I would have liked to face some of the problems she wrote about. Instead, I was battling two white colleagues who were making less work than bearable for me, and I was the only black woman on our team. Let me tell you another part of the struggle. Never reading about women in business who look like you, or reading statistics that include you. So yes, you have no idea how disappointed I was after reading Lean In. I was hoping this career book would be different from the others, that I would finally feel seen. It was just another career book by a white woman that hit the bestsellers list, talking about some white woman shit. I placed this book next to the countless career books written by white women, like Girl Boss by Sophia Amoroso and Nice Girls Don't Get the Corner Office by Lois P. Frankel, that ignore my experience in the workplace, give no thought to race and access, or add little side notes so they don't forget the black girls, an afterthought. I know I might get some flack for stating what is already obvious to women of color, but here is some breaking news. We're no longer satisfied with reading your white women tales from the career crypt. Our experiences are different, and it's time we discuss them. All women don't have the same experience in the workplace. Yep, I said it. And even though we have hit movies like Hidden Figures, it doesn't feel good to get treated like a hidden figure at work. Just because white people might not see us doesn't mean we don't add value to the bottom line each day. And just because we don't hold many leadership positions like our white counterparts doesn't mean we don't have the capacity to lead. Women of color are like the heart and kidneys of the workplace. You can't function without us. We don't need any more career books from white women telling us what we need to do to advance our careers if we just work a little harder. Or it's the white man's fault. Those are just more sad love songs I can't take hearing anymore. Well, as far as I'm concerned, time's up on the narrative that all women experience the same shit at work. Yes, 
Women as a whole do not have parity, but often when we discuss women in the workplace, it's white women most folks are referring to. It's a sad fact that women of color are supposed to always buy these career books and pretend it's all good. I want to know when the last time Cheryl, Sophia, or Lois read a career book about a woman of color and her experiences at work. In the words of the famous comedian Cat Williams, don't worry, I'll wait.